couple of great stories. One, uh, there was a Jewish rabbi who was a uh, very, very highly respected rabbi. From the, from the story I picked up, he was like the most respected of the Jewish rabbis. I think he died at like 107 years old. Crazy, way up there. And he just died a, few, a couple of years ago. Anyway, he, um, when he died, he, uh, he left a letter. And he said, this letter is not to be read till one year after my death, death or burial, one of the two. And um, so he died just a few years ago. So this was open sometime of recent. And uh, when they opened the letter, it said, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. <laughs> is that awesome? <laughs> Maybe you didn't hear me. This leading rabbi declared to all the other rabbis, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. So, so. <laughs> is that outrageous or what? I, there, were, there are at least 70 now Jewish rabbis in New York that are born again. who have received Christ as the Messiah. And there's a tremendous movement that is real underground and secret and hidden, but in Israel. And there are many that are waiting for the right time to come forth. But, uh, you know, this whole notion that things just get worse and worse, it's true on one level. I mean, on a, on a world's level, on a govern, uh, man's government level, it gets worse and worse. But in the kingdom, it just gets better and better. And uh, to hear these stories, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the leader of the Hamas, there's a second story, the leader of the Hamas, his, uh, his son got born again. And, uh, and he, has, he has declared openly his faith in Christ, saying, I know it may cost me my life, but he's uh, living, I think, in the Bay Area. And, uh, but he is uh, just a strong uh, preacher of the gospel. So that's so, so encouraging, so fun to hear those stories. Yeah, thank yeah, you God for that. Uh, one of the cool things is he went to a, a, a church in New Zealand that is related to a church that we partner with here in uh, California. It's down in Mammoth Lakes, and it's a, it's a church, an unusual church, in that it, it, it is a church focused on ministering to skiers and snowboarders. And they, they plant churches in those, in Mammoth Lakes, uh, California, this particular city in uh, New Zealand and in Switzerland. And that's, there's a community of people. They travel all over the world just to ski. That's what they do. And those folks are there to bring the gospel to them. And uh, the thing that's so encouraging to me is the Lord, the kingdoms of this world are in fact becoming the kingdom of our Lord in Christ. Every area of society is getting permeated and rocked by people that just are allowing God to sprinkle them into these, uh, in these realms of service. So I'm so encouraged by it. And they just tore it up down there. And uh, in fact, Kelly Clark, who uh, uh, Kelly Clark is um, an Olympic gold medalist from the Mammoth Lakes Church was down there. And uh, both her and another Olympic gold medalist um, had uh, career-threatening injuries, and they came here, and Jesus healed them both. And uh, so they are out there doing what they do. That's amazing, amazing, amazing. Eric got back not too long ago from, uh, uh, from Kenya. He's doing a class right now. But uh, he, when he was in Kenya, he laid hands on he got to pray over the guy who ended up winning the gold medal in the, in the marathon, the Kenyan. And this guy, he laid hands on him and prayed over him, and it so rocked him. He went away, he, he beat the, the Olympic gold uh, record by uh, three minutes, and, uh, he, and he won the gold medal, and he came home to Kenya and got saved. He wasn't born again yet, but the Lord just impacted him with that encounter. He went and... You know, I can't figure out why people run so far. You know, if they're not throwing a ball, I don't want to run. It's just like, you just got to keep throwing the ball to get, keep me running. Otherwise, you know, you got to draw a line somewhere. These people just run. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I got a report this week. I was, in, I was in Wales here a few weeks ago, and um, a gentleman was brought to me that was very, very uh, sick. You can tell when somebody's had a disease for a long time because they're just their whole ability to maneuver and walk and countenance and all that color, everything. Anyway, they brought, he was uh, in, uh, he had a kidney that had to be removed because of cancer. 
And so we laid hands on him and prayed, and he's gone back to the doc- doctor, has the report. There is no cancer left. It disappeared. They took a biopsy, and the cancer is gone. So uh, I'm just really, really encouraged about that. There was a testimony. Um, how many of you remember last week we had the testimony where everyone got saved in the juvenile hall? Everyone in that group. Four, 14, was it? 14 people? Well, they took that testimony into a drug rehab home this week and shared it. And they ended up, uh, an atheist got born again. Another atheist backslid. That's good. (laughs) Another atheist got born again. They ended up baptizing. There was recommitments to the Lord. They ended up baptizing 10 adults and five children. (laughs) Baptized in a bathtub. Come on. I heard another story I've got to get more details on. Um, but uh, in fact, if you're the one that told me the story, please bring me uh, more of the information if you can. But there was a gentleman walking back and forth in front of a Muslim mosque. And, uh, and he was, uh, uh, needed a miracle in his body and he'd asked them for healing and they couldn't do it. So he just walked back and forth and they wanted him to go away because you know, it, it wasn't a good, he was, he was lame and not capable of functioning normally. And, and so he just walked back and forth, back and forth. And someone who believes God saw him, went to him, and prayed, and God healed him. He got born again, and, uh, and there's been this domino effect that's taken place because of this guy's conversion. So it's not just amazing. Jesus is in a good mood, and he's, he's wild about you. So, You know, we're going to pray for some folks tonight for healing, miracles, in people's bodies. I just believe that God's gonna touch and heal people right now. There's uh, this uh, anointing for healing of migraines. Um, there was, I, was, I spoke at chapel this week for the Christian school, and, uh, and I, I gave this, uh, it wasn't intended as a word of knowledge, it was, to be honest with you, it was an illustration. I was illustrating something, and I used the migraine headache thing. But well, I'll be honest, when I did, I felt a release of power, and I thought, there was something on that. And uh, one of the uh, teacher's aides came to me and uh, one of the gals comes up to me and she says, I've been in, in n- constant pain, uh, two or three months, I forget. That's, uh, it was uh, some cycle thing in her life, but it was like the last two or three months was just solid, no break from pain whatsoever. And the Lord Jesus healed her right on the spot. So completely healed. And uh, so anybody who's got chronic You know what, let's go for chronic pain. You just got chronic pain. There's somebody, the Lord's gonna do a creative miracle in the upper part of the back where there's a degenerative condition and uh, uh, there's somebody who, uh, you're in an accident and um, is there anyone here that you were in an accident, you injured the upper part of your neck and when you were examined, uh, a doctor actually told you you would probably have arthritis there as a result of that accident? Who is that? Oh, we've got several people with that. Uh, You know, flies are attracted to decay. The demonic is attracted to injury. Because they want to sustain the effect of the injury past its normal course of healing. Listen to me, because the Lord's going to heal a bunch of people tonight that have had problems from accidents, Uh, crises that you've had throughout the years, and it's been 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and it should have been healed a long time ago, and the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. He has no right to sustain the effect of that thing, and uh, so we're going to watch the Lord heal people. In fact, you have permission to get healed before we pray. It's completely legal. It's completely legal. In fact, it's already, God's already touching. Somebody's already been healed in their in their upper back and neck. If you'll check that out, you'll find out that all the, all the pain is already gone. Who is that? All the pain, is that you? It's already happened? We haven't prayed yet, you gotta wait. <laughs> Move it around really good, check it really good. It's completely, it's, how long have you had that? Came out of a coma 11 years ago and you've had it ever since and it's over. Yeah, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, wow. Bless the Lord. 
Come on. All right.